Doctor Who sets itself apart from other TV franchises simply because they can recast the main character and not have to pretend like nothing is different. Not only does it give the show near infinite longevity, but it breathes new life into the show every few years. Though there are many positives to the change, it's never easy to say goodbye to a Doctor, especially if your handful of series with that iteration of the Time Lord have been your favourite thus far. However, if the Doctor sends himself off in a meaningful, moving or action-packed manner, it might make the transition for the audience that little bit easier. Either we'll be ready for the future, or we'll still be on the floor in the fetal position crying profusely. So let's rank them. My name is Rich, welcome to Who Culture, and this is Doctor Who ranking every regeneration from worst to best. Number 13, the sixth Doctor to the seventh Doctor. The Colin Baker era of Doctor Who was interesting. He was abrasive, violent, and the BBC One controller at the time, Michael Grade, put him on his hit list. When the sixth Doctor was fired from the show, the blood was bad real bad. So much so, when season 24 aired, Colin Baker did not return for his regeneration scene. Sylvester McCoy was cast, and he was all the production team had to play with when having the sixth Doctor regenerate into the seventh. So they stuck him in a curly blonde wig and had him face down. After the TARDIS crash lands, a beast waltzes in and rolls the Doctor over, who is suffering from a serious case of the glowy face, and is definitely just Sylvester McCoy in a wig. The sixth Doctor didn't get a spectacular send-off whatsoever. Though he's not topping anyone's list of favourite doctors, it's still a shame. Number 12, The War Doctor to the Ninth Doctor. The 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor, gave the hardcore crowd a ton of fan service to chew on. From the 12th Doctor's first appearance to Tom Baker finally reprising his role on screen, many fans were most excited to see John Hurt's War Doctor exit, not because he was bad, but because we all knew who he was about to regenerate into. Although Christopher Eccleston did not return for the special, there was this glimmer of hope that he might have shot something minute for this scene, but those hopes were rather far-fetched. Though the War Doctor had a fitting send-off, not seeing Eccleston in full was a shame but it didn't stop the crowds cheering in those cinema screens during the special's first airing. Number 11, the second Doctor to the third Doctor. The second ever regeneration Doctor Who saw needed to outdo the first. Patrick Troughton was heading out and John Pertwee was coming in. After being sentenced to exile by his own people, the Doctor was also forced to regenerate, with the Time Lords choosing his appearance for him. This is, at the time of recording, the only regeneration we haven't fully seen happen. After a trippy kaleidoscopic sequence featuring multiple faces of Patrick Troughton, the Doctor giddily spins into a dark abyss. Only in Spearhead from Space do we see the Doctor on the other side of the regeneration. It was a strange exit for poor Patrick, but the fact we didn't see it happen might come into significance after the events of Series 12. Number 10, The Fifth Doctor to The Sixth Doctor Keeping things trippy, 1984's The Caves of Androzani saw Peter Davison's Fifth Doctor exit the show. Much like Patrick Troughton's regeneration, multiple visages are seen rotating around the dying Doctor's face, with the master center screen demanding the Doctor dies. Of course, the Doctor regenerates into a new form, and we're given a perfect first impression of this new Doctor. You're expecting someone else? Regeneration can be traumatic for both a Time Lord and their companions, and things weren't great for Perry. Not only was she insulted by a fresh Doctor, he proceeded to strangle her soon after. This didn't bode well for viewers continuing their loyalty to the show, as warming to a new Doctor might take a while. For some, they simply never did warm to Colin Baker's sixth Doctor. Number 9, The First Doctor to the Second Doctor Regeneration was something truly incredible, not only canonically, but also in the world of producing television. Replacing the lead actor with no strings attached? Brilliant. Infinite longevity. But it wasn't an easy pill for William Hartnell to swallow back in 1966, but the gamble on recasting the king of sci-fi television paid off. Though by today's standards, the regeneration effect of blooming to white was nothing incredible, the sheer audacity of the producers to go ahead with such a risk was mind-boggling. Though the grand speeches and tears weren't present for this regeneration, it was still a damn important one. Number 8, The Seventh Doctor to The Eighth Doctor Just to reaffirm that the events of the 1996 TV movie were indeed canon, Sylvester McCoy reprised his Seventh Doctor role for the opening of the film, only to be gunned down by a gang in San Francisco's Chinatown. Whether the Doctor's regeneration was triggered due to the gunshot wounds, or by the confused American surgeons trying to save him, is still up for debate. After supposedly dying, Sylvester McCoy regenerated into Paul McGann in a hospital morgue drawer, which was done through strange face contorting from McCoy and some odd lightning effects. It certainly wasn't what we were used to, but they weren't rebooting the show into what we already knew. Also, the regeneration felt very passive on the Doctor's part, making it seem like he was just dead through the whole thing, which was just creepy.
Number 7. The Third Doctor to the Fourth Doctor The regeneration of John Pertwee into Tom Baker is the first regeneration reminiscent of what we know regeneration to be like today. Though it was swift and tender, unlike the explosive regenerations we usually see, the emotion and heart we are now used to was absolutely present here. After absorbing 10 years worth of radiation thanks to being lost in the time vortex, the Third Doctor shares a few words with Sarah Jane before politely fading into the bright and bouncy Tom Baker. Emotion was centre stage for this regeneration, and not only did it set it apart from the two regenerations prior, it also kickstarted arguably the best era of classic Who, if not Doctor Who overall. Number 6. The Twelfth Doctor to the Thirteenth Doctor After taking a hit from a Cyberman and refusing to regenerate for an entire Christmas special, Peter Capaldi's Twelfth Doctor stumbled back to the TARDIS. He then did what he did best monologue. Although he was talking to himself as usual, technically he wasn't talking to this version of himself, but the next one. Never be cruel, never be cowardly, and never ever eat pears. A moving Capaldi speech was the best way to send off the character, as these monologues were the highlight of his tenure in the TARDIS. Laugh hard, run fast, be kind. These words show how this Doctor had come full circle. Capaldi's 12th Doctor began life as a grumpy old man, seemingly unable to show any compassion. But over the course of his three series, he learned to love and realised just how important it was. So much so, he made a big point of it being something his successor must keep in mind. It was a fitting and a moving send-off for arguably the most underrated Doctor in the New Who era. Number 5. The 8th Doctor to the War Doctor Paul McGann's run as the Doctor up to this point wasn't all that vast. Though he had done multiple Big Finish audio dramas, he had never returned to the small screen as the Time Lord. However, during the lead-up to the 50th anniversary special The Day of the Doctor, a short episode titled Night of the Doctor was commissioned and featured the eventual regeneration of Paul McGann's Doctor. After McGann unsuccessfully saves the pilot of a crashing spacecraft, the Sisterhood of Khan offer him a selection of potions from which he can choose what kind of person to regenerate into. He states that there is no need for a Doctor anymore and decides to regenerate into a warrior, John Hurt's War Doctor. Not only did it give McGann's Doctor a fitting end, it also connected the classic and modern eras of the show on screen. Also, we were just happy to see McGann portray his Doctor again. Though the movie wasn't great, he was. Number 4. The Tenth Doctor to the Eleventh Doctor David Tennant's Tenth Doctor was hugely important to the reboot of the show. Though Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor got the ball rolling, Tennant solidified the foundations on which the continued future of the show was built. His tearful, explosive exit left fans in pieces, with even the Doctor himself getting emotional at his own regeneration. I Don't Want to Go kicked us all while we were down, and watching the beautiful coral TARDIS explode and fall apart was truly heart-wrenching. Though the energy of Matt Smith's Eleventh Doctor appearing kept us going for the next few minutes, leaving us on the edge of our seats, waiting with bated breath for Series 5 to eventually air. Number 3. The Eleventh Doctor to the Twelfth Doctor Saying goodbye to Matt Smith's Eleventh Doctor was no easy task. His incarnation saw the show take over the globe, and replacing him was no easy feat. Though many really weren't looking forward to the moment Capaldi appeared in his shoes, the build-up to this moment was nothing short of beautiful. After spending 300 years defending Trenzalore, the Doctor was old, out of regenerations, and about to die. Clara whispers to the Time Lords through an apt crack in the wall, and they grant the Doctor a new regeneration cycle, and the process begins. Returning to his youthful self, Doctor Eleven hallucinates his past within the TARDIS, seeing a young Amelia Pond run by, and eventually her adult self telling him, Good night. After a heartfelt speech about him always remembering when the Doctor was him, Doctor Twelve appears in only a snap of the fingers, fan service, a bold speech, and copious amounts of tears later, Doctor Eleven was gone, but not forgotten. Number 2. The Ninth Doctor into the Tenth Doctor the first regeneration of the reboot era was hotly anticipated. Though it was a shame that Christopher Eccleston was bowing out of the show after only one series, an entirely new audience were about to witness the miracle of regeneration for the first time. After absorbing the power of the Time Vortex, Doctor Nine was on the way out. He attempts to explain to a very confused Rose what is about to happen before he painfully utters his last words. Before I go, I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. And you know what? So was I. Bursting into seemingly flames, out the other side of this inferno came a dashing David Tennant ready to take on the universe. Though Eccleston's run in the TARDIS was short, it was definitely sweet. Almost perfect, if you ask me. And number one, the fourth Doctor into the fifth Doctor. 
While falling from a satellite dish might not be the grandest way to go, Tom Baker's Fourth Doctor was indeed one of the grandest portrayals of the Time Lord. After thwarting a devastating plan forged by the Master, the Doctor falls to his supposed death after dangling from a cable and seeing his enemies speak his name. Though, when lying in the grass, he begins to see his companions all speaking his name as Adric, Tegan, and Nyssa came to his side. The Watcher, a ghostly figure that had watched proceedings throughout Logopolis, was revealed to be a manifestation of the Doctor, who merged with the Fourth Doctor's dying body to become the Fifth Doctor, Peter Davison. It's the end, but the moment has been prepared for. It stands as one of the more unique regenerations the show has seen, and was a fitting end to a truly unique Doctor. And that is my list. Do you agree with this ranking or do you have your own order? Please let me know down in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the brand spanking new Who Culture channel if you haven't already. And you can follow me on Twitter at PickupChangeToe and on Twitch at Rich's Live. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I will see you soon.